Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Salaamu Alaikum. When we look at the tragedy of Karbala and the sacrifice of Imam Hussain alayhi salam, we see his battle against evil for the sake of righteousness and justice, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that amount of sacrifice from him, his companions, and Lady Zainab alayhi salam. And it touches our hearts, and the tears drop from our eyes, and it boils our blood that we could not be there to help him. Many times we catch ourselves visualizing what we could have done if we were there with the Imam. But this begs the question, and the question has always been there for me as a young child on where were the companions? What happened to the Muslim community? The good people, those who were fasting, they were praying. How come they didn't go and help the Imam? They knew who he was. They knew he was the grandson of the Prophet. Many of them knew he was the Imam of their time. What happened to those good people that their hands and feet were numbed and they couldn't get it out of themselves to get up when it was needed, when the Imam of their time needed them the most? So before we go ahead and build a champion in our minds of how we would you know, help Imam Hussein if we were there. Let's examine the fact that our Imam of our time is waiting for us today in the prison of Ghayba just because we are not ready. He is waiting for us. The question is not that we should be waiting for him, yes, but in reality is that is he waiting for us? What is he expecting? Why doesn't he feel comfortable to appear? Is it really true that we would be there to help Imam Hussein alayhi salam? It's the same question today. Would we be able to help our Imam? And if that's the case, why isn't he here? What do we have to do? In order to understand this better, let's go and examine the lives of few of the companions of the Imams. Zubair is a good example, an unfortunate good example. He was a very close companion of the Holy Prophet and Imam Ali alayhi salam. And he's the only person when the house of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam was attacked, he got up to defend physically he put his life in danger to defend the Imam of his time. The same Zubair, years later, is seen to be standing in the army opposing Imam Ali salam that wanted to kill the Imam for the sake of power. He went from being the only one to support the Imam physically to the person not only being indifferent, but rather being attacking his Imam. Now you might think to yourself, this cannot happen to me, but that's a big mistake. So when we look into what happened with Zubair, we realize from our narrations that one, he was listening to his corrupt son. Two, he was jealous of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Just two things, dunya in general. On the other hand, when we look at the life of Malik al-Ashtar, the champion, the closest companion of Amir al-Mu'mineen, we see quite the contrary. He is very close to finishing the fitna, close to the headquarters of the enemy. He's about to finish the fitna. Amir al-Mu'mineen sends a messenger says, come back Malik, we need you. This moment Malik goes against his nafs, against his self, because he has Amir al-Mu'mineen to listen to. He runs back and sees the Khawarij were surrounding him, a group that later became known as the Khawarij. He saved the Imam's life by just listening to him, by practicing discipline, being able to go against himself. He could have finished mob, you know, the enemy at the time. But he didn't and he did the right thing. The difference between Zubair here and Malik al-Ashtar is this. One has looked into himself and strengthened his, himself, disciplined himself to be able to listen to the Imam. The other has let himself go. And I hope we can look into our life and our hearts to be able to, to make the changes that we need to make in order for the Imam to be able to count on us. Jealousy, anger, lust, laziness, deception, arrogance, ignorance, you name it. What can we do now to help our Imam? And when are we going to start? So let's get strong for the sake of our Imam and remove our weaknesses. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.